Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated in Jesus' name. God is here in our midst. The Bible says when we call upon your name, you are here right in our midst. So I want you to know that we are not few, but we are many because God is with us. This morning, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Chris Mauki, BA Education, Masters of Art, Applied Social Psychology from University of Dar es Salaam, PhD in Psychology and Counseling, University of Pretoria, po Postdoctorate Study of Resilience, University of Pretoria, South Africa, a lecturer at Department of Psychology, University of Dar es Salaam. Dr. Chris Mauki is also a professional practicing counselor recognized by Tanzania Psychological Association, a certified corporate trainer by Joseph Business School of Illinois, USA, and Regent State University in USA, a certified workplace well-being coach, coach by the Positive Psychology Association of Kenya, PAAK. Dr. Chris Mauk spent his pa passive time as an in inspirational and motivational educator an author, mentor, coach, and trainer. As a trainer, Dr. Mauk trains and empowers institutions such as Vodacom Tanzania, Vodacom Mozambique, those are phone comp companies, uh, uh, Vodacom Ghana, Safaricom Kenya, Puma Energy, TCCL, British High Commission, and U.S. Embassy. Dr. Chris is a media personality who is read and viewed by more than 10 million people a week. Dr. Chris is married to Miriam, and they have two blessed, uh, they are, two are blessed with the two daughters, Ronnie and Rone, Romy and Ronnie. So uh, put your hands together to welcome this man of God, who is well blessed to come and share with us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, people of God. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah again. Yeah. If you're happy, may you wave like that. If you're happy, thank you very much. And turn to your neighbor and tell them, welcome in the house of the Lord. Tell them you're not wasting your time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you very much, Pastor Joshua and Pastor Margaret, uh, for inviting me among different ministries that will be having different states in the U.S., uh, having uh, uh, a time at your uh, Imani family church. And I believe um, God is having something uh, spectacular for us and for you this morning. And um, for those of you who were here yesterday for a parenting seminar, and I believe uh, God has started making some stuff in you. And today we are moving on. And we're blessing the Lord for this. Receiving greetings from my wife who will be joining me in a few days to come. Uh, she's finishing some of the ministries in back home. And she'll be joining me for some other ministries right here. And um, this morning, I want us to share a topic that I'm, I believe will touch different lives, uh, different age, different families, different background. And we will all be, be, uh, be blessed. Um, can you close your eyes and I'll say a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you minister unto us. Thank you because every good thing that we are given is coming from above. Father, I pray that you open our inner eyes and ears so we may understand the divine secrets from your kingdom. Father, we pray and we go against every spirit of enemy that hinder us from understanding and grasp secrets from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray that you give us understanding, spirit of wisdom, attention and concentration to your word. Help us to be transformed with your word in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. amen. I want us to learn something with the theme or the topic that I have entitled dealing with personal problems, family 
problems and generational problems. Dealing with personal problems, family problems, and generational problems. Now, before I go to the Word of God, I will give you a little definition and the difference between these three things. Personal problems, family problems, and generational problems. When we are talking of personal problems, we are talking of the problems that are a result of your personal, irrational actions, disbelief, not having obedience, maybe to the parents, maybe the community, maybe to the word of God. The problems that have been initiated by your personal behavior and nobody to be blamed. They are just your own weaknesses. And you have caused some problems. Those are personal problems. And we know we commit them a lot of times. Family problems are those problems, weaknesses, behavior issues that are a result from family. And mainly they are the result of the building up, the raising up of your parenting. The way you have been raised. The psychology tells me 80% of who you are today, you are a result of what your parents, dad and mom, or your, your guardians inserted into you. That's your 80%. So every weakness, everything that is a result of your parenting, raising, family, that is your family issues or family problems. Generational problems, these are the problems, behavior issues, tendencies and habits that we see in our lives that go beyond our family. Sometimes you see these similarities between what is happening in you or what is happening with your father or what is happening with your mother. It is relating with what is happening with the uncle, what is happening to the aunt, what is happening to your grandfather, what is happening to your grandmother. And you see there is a similarities of problems and issues that you cannot differentiate from what is happening to you and what is happening to your clan. Now you know the clan is bigger than the family. So anything that is beyond your family and you see it with different generations, that is a family, that is a generational problem or generational behavior problem. So I want us to learn this uh, today how we can differentiate them the sources of them, where are they coming from, and how can we deal with them? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know there's no one who can say he or she will be out of any of this. If you don't have generational problems, maybe you have family problems. If you don't have family problems, maybe you have personal problems. If you don't have personal problems, maybe you have family problems. And it's unfortunate that some of our personal problems give birth to our family problems. And some of our personal problems give birth to both family problems and generational problems. And here we are today, maybe we have people who are struggling with some of the things that you think they are personal come to realize they are family. Or you're struggling with something that you think they are family, but they are generational because it, it just, it, it's just because you don't know. But somebody within your clan was suffering the same thing. Hallelujah. And I will read from the book of Second Samuel. For the Bible readers, you understand we have two Samuels. Samuel 1 and Samuel 2. Second Samuel, chapter 11, verse 1 to 5. And... Most of my examples will be based on the book of 2 Samuel. Now we are on chapter, three, uh, chapter 11, then I uh, will give an example from chapter 13, then uh, different verses, etc., etc. Now, I am reading the verses that many of us knows. 
We know the story uh, which is written in 2 Samuel, the story about David. And I will read in the name of Jesus. The Bible say, it happened in the spring of the year, at the time when kings go out to the battle, that David sent Joab and his servant with him and all the Israel. And they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. When it, then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful. And behold. So David sent an inquire about the woman. And someone said, is this not Bathsheba? The daughters of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him. And he lay with her. For she was cleansed from the impurity. And she returned to her house. And the woman conceived. So she went, she sent and told David and said, I am with a child. How many knows this story? How many knows this story? Okay, a few of us. If you read the book of Second Samuel, you'll understand this story about David. Starting a personal problem that was later became a family problem and later a generational problem. No one knows why, what David think but he's, he's initiating a problem with different levels. Level one, David is lusting with somebody's wife, Bathsheba. And he lay with this woman, a wife of Uriah. Then if that was not a bigger problem, the wife is sending a message that I'm pregnant. Now, David understand that, whoa, 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 whoa. Pregnant with somebody's wife? I'm a king. This is a scandal. So what will I do? He is planning of sending a message to the army because Uriah was fighting. Strong soldier, fighting the front rows. So he sent a message to Joab, bring Uriah back. I want him back. You know, that's an order from a king. You bring Uriah back. You know, what was the king wanted? He wanted to make Uriah go sleep back home so that it may no be known that that child, that pregnancy is. I always tell people when I do parenting seminars, we don't have a DNA of a mother. We always have a DNA of, of fathers. Do you understand that? Why? Because everybody is sure of the mother. Because it's a mother that is sure of your dad. Being raised and being paid fees, paid fees by him is not guaranteed. Uriah could do the same. But the son, that boy, that, that son belongs to, to David. And that was a second plot. Now look, the first scene, personal problem, was adultery. Then another plot, lie. Deceiving. But look here, Uriah never went home. Why? Because he said, I cannot sleep with my wife. While some other people are dying out there. I'm not going back to the battle today. I'm sleeping right here. And some guys told King David. You know King David? The guy never went home. He slept right out your, outside your door. So David realized that this guy never went. So the plan was aborted. We cannot mix the thing. So he sent him a letter to Joab. That Joab take this guy at the front row. Why? So he can win the battle? So they can die. He can be killed the first. Now we are moving. Adultery. Level two. Lie. Level three. Murder. Do you understand me? Level three is murder. From a personal problem, we have three levels of problems. Did you die? Died? Yes, he died. And God was so angry with this issue and he sent information through a prophet 
to uh, David that you have wronged me a lot and I'm so angry and I will deal with you and I will deal with the child. And that child never lived. After Uriah died, King David took the Bathsheba as a wife. You know that, huh? And that's first day, the child died and other guys were born through, uh, now Bathsheba became a wife and one of the sons who was born through Bathsheba is King Suleiman. Okay, are we together? Now, if you go to 1 Samuel 13, you start now seeing the problem has been graduating from a personal problem from David with three levels, lie, deception, murder, is moving from a personal problem of a father to a family problem. Where Amnoni, who is a son of David, is lasting with a sister of their own blood, Tamar. Now, the first last was with somebody who is not from our blood. Now, the second last is we are lasting within the house. People of the same father lasting each other. Now, I'm known as plotting, how can I sleep with this beautiful sister? The Bible says Tamar was beautiful. The Bible says Bathsheba was very beautiful. And the Bible says Tamar was very beautiful. You know the Bible is very clear. There are some women, the Bible speaks and it's silent. It says he's a woman. Hello? And there are some women, the Bible says she was when the Bible talks about Saul, about King David, about everything, he talks, he talks about he was a king, he was good, uh, after man of God, Abraham. But when the Bible talks about Joseph, he says he was handsome. I love the Bible. How many love the Bible here? It's very specific. So Tamar, this guy now started to have a plot, just like a father on top of the roof. Now he's not... Lasting about somebody's wife. Now is somebody is lasting with a sister. Now he's having a plot. How can I get this woman? Now remember, I always tell people: always, even if you have hundred friends who tells you good things, you will always have one guy who advise you horrible stuff. Do you have those guys? Eh? You will have one guy who, and I wonder why we will always take his advice or her advice. We always have, even if you have 10 good guys who advise you the way of God, you will have one guy, one person in your friendship, in your circles, who tells you horrible stuff. And I'm known he had that guy. When he is plotted about every, that guy told him, you know what? Pretend you're sick. Pretend you're sick. And sick, truly, truly sick. Get sick. And order to your dad, king. He says, I'm sick. And the only person who can take care of me is my sister. And you know, he never thought that there's that friend who gave the technique. You know, we have those friends who give us good technique to do horrible stuff. And I'm not saying, what a plan, smart friend. I never thought of that. Good. And he got sick. Send the information to dad. King David. And King David told Tamar, you know, your brother is sick. And he says, for him to get quick recovery, the sister is needed. And the sister went there. At the process of serving a plate, Amnoni grabbed the sister. And the rest was history. Now, it was not just sex. It was rape. Are we together? Remember, the father never raped. Now the son is raping. Do you see the graduate? Do you, do, you, do, you see the, do you see how things unfolding? From personal problems now to family problems. You go on reading more verses in, in chapter, uh, chapter 13. You come to realize Absalom realized, Absalom was another elder son of David, realized that I'm known in my own brother slept with my own sister. And remember, Absalom was sharing a womb with Tamar. He said, I will revenge. Making a party with some friends. 
some wines and some barbecue and everything. And they said, now we need to applaud. We need to invite this guy. He like wine. Let him come. And they applaud everything. When he comes here, he drink. We kill him. Now remember, the same murder which was done to someone outside their blood, the murder is done within. Are we together? Yes. Are we together? Yes. Now the killing is not killing somebody in the battle. No, people are killing themselves within the family. And you read the Bible, you come to realize Absalom slept with the mother. No, it was not sleeping with somebody's wife. It was sleeping with our mothers within the home. Do you see abomination started today? It started there. Sleeping with their own mother. And if that was not enough, if you go on reading chapter 13, go on. Absalom, the same son, plotted to throw, overthrow the father. People of God, do you see them unfolding? Do you see them unfolding? Now it is not about somebody else. It's my own father. And at the end of the day, he succeeded anyway. Throwing. If you read some books which were written by David, Psalm 41 and a lot, he wept before God, forgive me. I know I have done something wrong. God say, I will forgive you. But your children will do what? They will pay. Let me tell you, my friends, there are some sins we have repented and God has forgiven us, but we see the results. And I always tell parents, one day when you're old, you have those paycheck of your retirement and you're looking some of the weaknesses that you had, you look at them, at your kids, and they don't know that that was your life, but you know. You start seeing your son is having a child outside the marriage. You start seeing your daughter is impregnated before marriage. And you know that that was me. It's extremely painful. That is extremely painful more than that pregnancy pain. That delivery pain. Because you start seeing the fruits of your personal problems becoming family. And before you know, they transfer from family to become generation. If I'm talking to you and you see, if you look at your family, you see some of the things that are so much similar from your dad. You look at them and they are so much similar from your mom. You look at them and they are so much similar. And these are not only problems, behavior. They might be diseases. There's a very thin line between psychology and spirituality. Why? Because a lot of Physical issues, they confirm emotional issues. Why do you think a lot of people with mental health, they are so easy with demons? Because there's a very thin line. The Bible says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let your sin and anger dwells in your heart until the evening. Why? So that you don't give the devil the room. Why? So you, when you are emotional and unstable, you give the devil the room. Do you understand me? Let me, give you, let me give you some of the benefits. Let me give you some of the examples of diseases that whenever you see them, they are possibly generational. Diabetic. High blood pressure, low blood pressure. Asthma. Those diseases. There's so much going through. And you find some people say, uh, my uncle or my dad died with uh, B, uh, high blood pressure. His mother as well died with the same thing. Okay, let me give you a calculations. How will you know that is not a personal problem, is a generational problem? If you see more than two people dying of the same thing or suffering of the same thing or experiencing the same behavioral problems in the blood connection, that is a generational problem. More than two. One to two, it might be accidental. More than two, you don't need to go to which doctor. You don't need to come to pastor. Just know that that is a generational problem. Now, let me teach you this. Okay, let me tell you this. Do you know that everything that is done to witches and to witch doctor and the 
darkness is exactly what was done in the spirit of light. They have copied us. We didn't copy them. Okay. Do you know that any worship, in order of anything to be called worship, there must be a word, there must be singing or dancing, there must be giving. That was biblical. And the devil copied. Whenever, whenever you go to a witch doctor, he must speak something that is word. You must give something that is giving, offering. And you, there must be singing, dancing. Oh, you dance or he dance. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? There is no, there is no worship. That's why the Bible says, don't come to me empty handed. There's no worship that do not have giving. There's no worship. If it, it doesn't have giving, it's an event. Are we together? The difference between an event and worship and, and, and service is it, if you, the, the three that I gave you, if you deduct one, it is not a service. If there's no word, if there's no music, like singing, and there's no giving, it is not a worship. If you go to a, witch doctor, if you go to a, a good witch doctor and they tell you, don't bring anything, run from that witch doctor. You will always bring something. <laughs> my friends, we say bring your heart, but my friend, Worship, we don't only bring heart. You must bring something. This thing we say, bring your heart. You bring your heart, God can mend it so that he can teach you that you don't come empty-handed. So you bring with something. The Bible says you will honor the Lord because he's the one who gives you strength to be rich. The hand that giveth is the hand that gathers. There's no hand which has clo is closed, is given. Never. So, the same thing is copied in the spiritual. How will you know that is generational? This is generational. Just like witch doctors, a mother who is witch will never inherit the witch basket to a son. It will always be to the daughter. The father who is a witch will never inherit the basket from a daughter to the daughter. It will always be to the, to the son. Exactly spiritual generational problems. If you find them, okay, let me give an example of a pastor. If there's something crooked as a problem to the pastor, and pastor sees to the brothers and to the grandfathers, that is the lineage of men, will always go to the sons, not daughters. But if, this, if the if pastor see the same problem to the aunts who are female, but from the paternal side, that thing can also hit the daughters. You see it from your mom. It can hit your daughters. You see it to the uncles. It can hit your son. But it comes from maternal's male. Am I teaching somebody? Oh, yeah. And it will never cross. It will never cross. That's why you go to some families, you find ladies are getting married. Guys, they will never marry. Have you ever seen that? They get 40, 45. They have good checks. They're nice. They, they are graduated, but they will never get married. And even those who try to, it fails before years. And you go to some, to some, some families, ladies will always have kids before marriage. And the guys, it doesn't happen that. It doesn't happen that. You go to some families, every family will have a guy who commits suicide. And not ladies. It doesn't cross. Are we together? Are we together? That is a generational problem. Now, remember I've told you, you might do something which is personal, just like David. Before you know, it is familiar. And before you know, it is generational. Sometimes, some of us, we are going through issues and problems, and we don't know, and we deal with them as personal. But you don't know there was somebody. The Bible says, I punish you the third to fourth generation. Many of us, we only know the first and the second generation 
Very few will know the third. Especially in that globe, this modern world, eh? our children do not know a lot of people. Sometimes you, you even show your kids the photo of your grandfather, of, of your dad. They even don't know him. But daddy doesn't look like you. Is this your father? You, t you, you, you sweat to introduce them, your parents, to your kids. That is only the second generation. What about the third? What about the fourth? I have seen people, they are Christians. They speak against polygamism before they know. Somebody come to realize he got married to a second wife. I'm a practicing professional counselor, 26 years now. I had a case of a, of a guy who was so much against the eldest brother because the brother got married to a second wife. In fact, they're coming from a, a polygamy family because the father did that. But the father, when did that, all the children were against the father and they stopped assisting the father financially because they say, Father, we told you not to get married because you've hurted our mother. So before they know, this elder son got married. And everybody was saying, of all the people, you was the one to organize us to stand against the father because he had a mother. What happened with you? So now the family stood against the brother. They say, you're not coming to the, to the clan meeting because you have really done an abomination thing. And the youngest son was engineering the battle against the brother. How can we accept you? You followed what our dad did. Now the whole family accepted the, 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 the wife of this the eldest brother. In, 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 in Swahili, we call them Shemeji. So it's a wife of your, of your brother. So they say the sister-in-law. So they, they told her that we accept you and we will always be with you. Forget what your husband has done. So they denounced the other wife. Three years ago, that little brother who was against got married. And he went to travel another state and got married. And worse enough, he got married in church. Because in Tanzania, they know, you know, they know, it's, it's a law. They will announce three times, like three weeks, 21 days. If nobody says anything, you're allowed to get married. So he went to a different state that they don't know that the guy got, got, got married. And got married in church. So the clan said and say, what happened with you of all the people you engineered us? And, you, and he said, the demon of my father came to me. <laughs> the demon of my father came to me. It was a, the, the family disintegrated. So what does it, that, does that mean? Every son of the other guy went on on polygamism. They never wanted it. They never promoted it. They never supported it, but they ended up. Do you understand me? And I was telling those guys, if you start hating them without dealing with this tissue spiritually, your sons will go on the same thing. Many times in my counseling, I've never come to to a family that had a suicidal incident that was the first. You will just know that this is the first my son wanted to commit suicide or my daughter wanted to commit suicide. He has a suicidal ideation, but you don't know. Go and speculate. There must be somebody who did the same because suicidal is also a behavior which is transgenerational. Now, let me, give you, let me teach you psychology. Every generational problem in psychology, we call it TGP. TGP is, stands for transgeneration problem. If you take TGP to the Bible, it's called family spirit. Oh, curse. Do you know curse? Curse. I'm providing psychological services. My company provides psychological services to some of the telephonic company back in home. So there is a lady who came to my, my office because... She was so angry because the mother committed suicide. And they were together with the mother. And the mother says, please allow me to go home because they didn't want the mother to stay alone. So they brought the mother in their family. So the mother pushed. They wanted to go to, their, to her home just for a day. Come to realize the mother had depression. You know depression? 
The one of the character of a depression, you like to be alone. Loneliness. And another character of depression is disassociation. You want to disassociate. And I'm always I tell people, whenever you see somebody who is depressed, want to be alone. There's a suicide spirit is hunting them. Eagerly. Bitterly. And that voice in those depressed people that commit suicide is a strong voice in them. That's why most of them, they commit suicide. Because it speaks to them hardly. It's very hard to stand against it. Something will tell you, go back to the roof. Just throw yourself in the car. Look at that car, is coming high speed. Just do it. So the mother had that, and he went home. They made a mistake and allowed her to go back to her home so that he can come in the evening, and he went home. And he just took a clothes, not to another piece of clothes, and got something big and put it in the, in the, in the neck, Stand it out, uh, uh, hang it to the door, and off she went. Now, you know when somebody has committed suicide, when the government comes and the police comes, that person does not belong to you until when the government deals with the body and everything, so he's convicted by the government because that's uh, against the law. So they never allowed to be to touch the mother. Never. So they were so angry. So they came to my office crying because they said, we have been raised by a single mother, and we have been now successful. We wanted to make our mother happy. We wanted our mother now to enjoy life because we have been successful. Our father died when we were 12, 13, 15. Our mother raised us so hard, so poor, in a very poor state. Now we wanted to make our mother happy. Now look at what happened. She committed suicide. So they were very angry with the body. They never even wanted to bury the mother because they were so bitter. So before the mother was buried, I started counseling them to remove that bitterness. So I told the husband, are you sure this mother is the first? The wife told the husband, tell Dr. Chris, our mom is the first. We've never seen this thing in our family. Our mother is bringing abomination. And I told that guy, the husband, never believe that. Go and find the uncles and elders in the family. Ask them. Because I don't want to deal with the problem of the mother committing suicide. I want us to deal with the generational problem. So that we help everybody in the family. We don't, don't, we don't, don't just need to help your wife only. Two weeks to come. He came back to my office and he told me. You know what Dr. Chris? We came to realize the mother is the fourth person committed suicide in their family. So I told that guy. We need to deal with this thing because it's a generational problem. Because before you know your daughter's are in. I told you it doesn't cross, eh? It doesn't cross. It doesn't go to men, to boys. It's just female, then it continues. To, so the daughters are also in the chance. Are we together? So we worked on that. And thank God that everything went, went fine. Do you understand what I'm teaching? Okay. Now, let me show you uh, there's some of the things that I want you to to learn here. Three types of these behavior problems. Three types. Number one, I've told you, the behavior problems are the problems that have influence of personal. Nobody else involved. Your issues, your disobedience, your lust, your issues. Number two, the behaviors and problems that have influence of the family. Parenting. Raising. Yesterday I taught here that we have problems that are unique for people who have been raised from single parent families. That can also be familiar. We have problems of people who have been raised single parent but only father. And we have different problems that are been raised uh, from the people who have been raised by single family but from a mother. Do you know that a son who has been single parented by a mother is different from a son who has been single parented by a father? Do you know there's a difference? Do you know there's a difference between a single parented daughter by a mother and a single parented daughter by a father? Now in counseling we get problems. You come to realize you're dealing with a couple problem, marital problem of a single parented son of a mother, a single parented daughter of a father and they got married. You see that? 
The guy is single parented by the mother, so he's fully emotional. He has a lot of affectiveness. So he cries in everything. He's scared of everything. The daughter, he's full of effectiveness, single parented by the father. He's a, she's a go-getter. She doesn't take nonsense. <laughs> and these two people, the pastor told them, until death, do them apart. And somebody says, where are you, death? <laughs> Come, please. <laughs> that is the second category. And the third category are the problems that have influence of generation. They go beyond the family. Are we together? Are we together? Does somebody understand me? Okay. Um, now, let me give you sources. What are the sources of these behaviors, of these problems? What are the sources? What are the sources? Then I'll give the sources, then we'll go to uh, give the solutions and we pray. What are the sources? Source number one, behaviors and habits. Behaviors and habits. Do you know that in order for a behavior to happen, there must be tendencies and habits, and when they graduated, they bring what? Behavior. And the psychology tells behavior is influenced by context. Are we together? That's why, why do we have marital problems? Because we have somebody with problems from the context of her family. And we have a brother with some problems of the context. I normally tell brothers who want to get married, I say, if you are successful to see the mother of your wife to be, watch her behavior because that's exactly how your wife will be. Why? Because we'll never grasp an apple under the mango tree. <laughs> Do you know that? Always the mango will be under the mango tree. <laughs> so the way she is, is if, the, if, if, the, if you're expected in law to disrespect the husband, just get ready to be disrespected. Tune yourself in the nice frequencies because you'll be disrespected. If the father, expected father-in-law is rude and arrogant to the wife, he's not romantic. If he's completely not romantic, just tune yourself. Like, tune yourself that I will never have gifts. Because this son, he needs the grace of God. You know, there are some people in order to be romantic, they need a lot of tuition. <laughs> and preaching and sermons and fasting. But some people, it's just in them. They ask you, my wife, have you eaten? My wife, where are you? And there are some, uh, some of us, until you ask, please ask me where I am. <laughs> <laughs> And even if you do that, ask, ask me first. Oh, do you know where I am? It, and it's probably because they're not that. And go to the family. Are we together? Go to the, the family. So the first source is behavior and tendons. The second source. Second source, family spirits. Family spirits. And I've told you already about that. Go and watch at your family. What is it that, okay, some of you are here and the large part of your family is back home. I know you communicate and you know them. Check out. If possible, go ask, mommy, what is it that killed uncle? Pneumonia. But it's exactly the thing that my son is suffering here. The good thing we have the blood of Jesus that does not respect the borders of geography. The borders of GPS and longitude and latitude, it crosses everywhere and it works. You don't need to travel to Nigeria, to, to, to Algeria, to, to Sierra Leone, and to ask them, the blood of Jesus. We said the God who is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. The only thing you need is understanding. Do you have that problem back home or you don't? If you don't, you're safe. If you have, we bring it at the cross. If you don't know if you have or you're not, you have doubts. That's not a problem. Our God is working. 
is that God detector who we inject somewhere and he detects everything. The Bible says everything in darkness shall be put into light. Amen. The third source, the third source, childhood pain and traumas. Childhood pain and traumas. Now remember, childhood pain and trauma, they're not personal problems, they're not familiar problems, they're not generational problems. But if you're not in careful, you will start to produce some things that will become familiar, that will start to be generational. I'll give an example. I have clients, is the mother, raped when she was young, nobody knew, she became angry, hatred with men, so much negative with men, believing every man is a dog. Now, the nature brought her up and she need to be married because the parents are pushing and she went into marriage. Remember the perception attitude is still the same. Men are horrible. And she got married. The husband thinks she's loved but she's just pretending. She tell me, Dr. Chris, I've been pretending everything including during sex. It's, I'm pretending. I hate her. But then because the hatred, hatred of men doesn't end to men. It ends to any creature who is a man. Now, she started hating her own sons. There was a day she called me and told me, you know what, Dr. Chris? I was bathing my little son and she was behaving and I took the water, which is extremely hot, and pour out to her, to him. And I stayed alone and I came to realize it was not her disturbing me during birth, but because of the anger. Remember, it was childhood trauma. Now it's becoming family problem. Because automatically children who are raised by this mother, they'll grow up with hurt. That's why many times I have a lot of clients who tell me, you find the wife is saying, oh, my daughter doesn't want to stay with me. My daughter is going here. My daughter is ha hates me. She doesn't want to live with me in the same house. And the only thing, before I deal with what is happening, I ask them, what is your relationship between you and your daughter? Do you know that we have a lot of hatredness between the mothers and their daughters more than the sons and their fathers? Do you know that? I have cases people come and the mothers are telling me, you know, Dr. Chris, I'll never come to your office because you're just dealing with my daughter and this daughter is having affairs with the father. I say, are you sure? I can't. You only come to realize it's just hatred with the daughter that the mother is assuming that you have an affair with your father. Trauma. So where do we fetch this childhood trauma? Simple areas. Parenting. Were you loved by your parents? Let me tell you, friends, I've traveled different countries and preached and teach. I have met some people who flew their countries to some countries that are thought to be so much developed and thinking that they went for prosperity. Some of them are telling me, Dr. Chris, I came here because I was running away from my father who wanted to rape me. I came here because I was running away from a mother who is so hard hurting, so painful with me. I came here you know, you know, with the social media and this global world, we look at them and we say, oh, he's in Belgium, everything is fine. Not everybody is fine. Some people are carrying pain. Some people are carrying burdens. They just need somebody to tell them the gospel of the cross, the gospel of hope. There are some people, they're given opportunity, they will stay in church and sleep here, not go anywhere. Because the world has been so much crooked them. Let me tell you, you better have been disappointed by anybody out there. Some people have been disappointed by their own blood. But the people that they trusted, the people that they put hope in them, they call them daddy, they call them uncle, they call them aunt. And you walk with that disappointment and forgiveness. And you move with that every time. Before you know, it creates a hatred that you transfer to your sons and daughters. Hallelujah. 
So let me, let me show you a few things on what to do and we pray. What can you what can you do? Now, remember, we have, if you go to read the Bible, you realize we have an example of David. Rejected when he was young by the father. But he never wanted to pay that. He never wanted to continue with the trauma. He wanted to pay good. Jacob as well with Esau, etc., etc. Now, what can you do today? Number one, make sure you watch out your behavior. Watch out what you do. Watch out what you say. Because before you know, it will be a seed planted that will grow. And I've told you, if you won't harvest it, your sons and daughters will. Number two, teach your kids through actions. Be a model to them. Live the life of the gospel. Live the life of Book of Acts, loving people. Let your kids see the goodness of God in your life. You know the problem with other parents, we talk too much and we don't do a lot. We talk to our daughters and sons, do this and don't do this. You will be like that, you will fail, you know, the life will treat you bad. And when they look at you, you're nobody. You, you don't act what you say. And let me teach you psychology. Our children text from us 70% from observation. It, we call it observational learning. We call it social learning by Albert Bandura. Only 30% is from what they hear. Now go check. Are you doing more or are you saying more? Number three, if you find there's a traumatic or psychological thing that you cannot deal with it, go for counseling. Come to pastor. I say, pastor, before you pray it for me, let me tell you my story so that you can be counseled. Hallelujah. Go for counseling. Let me tell you, friends, I know and I believe on the power of prayers, but there are some things they need to, for you to be counseled first so that you can remove everything and put on the table so that you can be prayed for. Now remember, if you want to go for counseling, if you're not ready to be honest, don't go for counseling. There's some people, they want God, you know everything, just do it. In counseling, we don't do it. We are not gods. We'll ask what happened to you. I was raped. By who? Which age? When? What was your relationship? Where? How? There are a lot of things that happens today with the digital world. People are doing things and whenever you're told in cancer, you think it was physical. Come to realize it was digital. So if you're not honest and you don't want to speak out, don't go for counseling. Hallelujah. Then the last after counseling, then go for spiritual intervention. Go for prayers. Go for prayers. I really thank God that he gave us the work of the cross, the blood of Jesus. That does not only limit only first and second generation. It cut across the things you know and the things you don't know. Now I want to pray. And I want to pray specifically with maybe two groups here. If you believe that Jesus works and his works in the cross connect with his words when he said, it is finished. Just realize, just have faith that even your issue, it is finished. I'll give you an example. There are some things in my clan have been troubled a lot of people, males in my, my clan. Almost everybody in my clan, they will have a child before they go to marriage. And whenever they're in marriage, they will have children as well. So most of people who are married by the Maukis, you'll just understand. You won't be the first mother. 
there will be some children you will find and there will be some children that will find you. That is common. My grandfather is the only person in our clan that had only one wife and he was an evangelist. Another person is my dad because he was a pastor. When I realized that, when I realized that, I realized it and work with it with my daughters and with me so that it doesn't hit me the same. The brother who comes after me, we are five, he's married, but he's still marrying every day. And he's still collecting kids. One day my father was traveling somewhere in another region and he saw somebody like him. The guys are playing down. This guy. You know the blood, eh? It's this guy. Is it? He buys some cripsy and he gives that son. Two years down the line, my, son, my, my brother said, Daddy, I'm coming to say hi to you. And my brother came with this, that kid that he saw in another state. <laughs> Come to realize it was his grandson without knowing. He just met them playing somewhere. The blood was, you know how powerful is the blood? So imagine I am safe on it, over it, but my brother is into it. Why? Because he doesn't believe on dealing with generational. If you have anything that you feel in your clan, anything, anything that you see the similarities, and you really want us to deal with it, stand and we can pray together. Just stand up. Anything that you see similarities with your clan, with the people back home or with the people that you know and you don't want it for you and your kids, just stand up. Just stand up. Stand up and we pray together. If you can raise up your hand, if you can raise up your hand, if you can raise up your hand, if you can raise up your hand. I will speak very few words and please follow them and we'll be done with it. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you humbly I come before the cross. Forgive me with all my heart. Everything in my blood which is not divine, which is not godly, that has been tormenting people, I stop them in the name of Jesus. I will limit them in the name of Jesus. It will end not touching me and my children, and the children of my children, in the name of Jesus, I render everything in the cross, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for setting me free. Father, thank you, because the cross set us free. Father, thank you, because your blood has announced freedom to us. And I declare everybody who has said this prayer to be free in the name of Jesus. I declare everybody who has said this prayer to be free in the name of Jesus. Every work of the enemy, knowing and unknowing, willingly and unwillingly, I cast it and render them powerless in the name of Jesus. I speak prosperity in these people. I speak freedom in these people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give a clap to the God. Amen. Hallelujah.